Hey guys, the Nitrogberg here. Hope you're doing well. If you're a new viewer, welcome to the channel. If you're a returning viewer, welcome back. Happy to see you. So in this video, we will be looking at how to configure load balancing and failover using gateway groups on PFSense. So this is going to be a fun little experiment. And I think this is something that could be very useful for most small businesses, medium businesses, even large enterprises, really. But let's actually look at how we can configure this on a pfSense firewall. So we're in my virtual topology. This is a Linux Ubuntu machine that is connecting directly to my pfSense firewall. And from there, I've got some basic internet access set up. Now, I just want to navigate to the pfSense. And while I do that, let's just actually think about what are the benefits of using load balancing and failover. So these concepts are a little bit different because load balancing in essence will allow you to use multiple links at the same time, effectively increasing your throughput or your bandwidth capacity. So each link will still have its relevant capacity, but you can use the links at the same time. So this is very useful for uh, if you have maybe like multiple fiber links or a wireless backup link and a fiber link, and they're both uh, uncapped, then it's, it's a great solution for a user like you. However, maybe you don't want both solutions to run at the same time. Maybe you want a failover scenario so that let's say your backup connection might be a capped solution like an LTE or some device and you don't have unlimited bandwidth. So you maybe just want to fail over to that device in the event of a failure. So for that, we can set up failover. And the ways you go about setting this up is relatively the same. But we'll start off by configuring the load balancer. And then I'll just quickly walk you through some things that I think is nice to have and see when you set this up on your PFSense firewall. So firstly, I've just got three interfaces, a WAN, a LAN, and a DMZ. I do have another interface, which is going to be connecting to my hypervisor, which you can think of as my secondary connection. Now, this could have been an LTE modem or another a service provider's router, or it could be something that I could be doing another triple PoE connection on, whatever. It's just another interface we're going to be having internet access off of. So this is going to be our second link. So I just want to assign this link or add it to my interfaces. It will give itself the name of OPT2. And I'm just going to change this description to WAN2. I'm going to enable the interface and the IPv4 configuration type, since this is going to be DHCP based, I'm going to select DHCP. But if you were using another static connection or triple PoE or something, then you could have specified those details here. So I'm just going to connect with DHCP. I'll apply my changes. And now I will have a secondary WAN link, which is going to be awesome. But this link is effectively not going to be doing anything. It's just going to be existing in my network. So if I go back to my dashboard, we can now see I have a WAN2 link here and it's obtained an IP address. And in theory, I should be able to route tra traffic over it if I set that as the gateway. So if I go into my system routing, I could in essence make this WAN2 DHCP interface that's here now. I could set this as the primary gateway and then traffic would route over it. But that's not really failover and this is also a manual process to do. So that I don't like. I'd like this all to be as automated as possible when we want to fail over. So what I recommend you do is you can set your gateway groups. But before we set the gateway group, since this is a dynamic interface that has been created, I'm just going to edit this. And I'm just going to save this as well. So let's just call this WAN2 gateway. So now that that's been saved, it is two actual interfaces that I have on my PFSense firewall. So first thing I want to do is if I want to set up load balancing, I can go to the gateway groups and you can create a gateway group to do the load balancing. So I'll click on the add button and we can call this group load balance or load balancer or whatever you want to call it. And now we can set some priorities. Now the LAN gateway, which is my primary WAN connection, my WAN one, I'm going to set this to tier one. And this in essence will just say that this connection is going to be the first one that we're going to pick whenever it comes to any type of routing. Now we've got the second WAN interface here as well. And here's the difference between setting this as load balance or failover. If you select the same tier, it will be running in load balance mode. 
And if you select a second tier or another different tier, then that would in essence be failover. So devices in the same tier will first run together and it will go down the list to the next tier, the next tier, the next tier. So if you had even more WAN connections, maybe you had four WAN connections, then you could have different tiers set up for each one so that there's like a big string of failover occurring. But we're just going to set both of them to tier one for the load balance. And we have a trigger level. And this trigger level, in essence, just says if some type of condition is met, then it will like kick in a failover scenario, like it will route traffic over another interface. So this is where we get member down, packet loss, high latency, or packet loss and high latency. But I'll just leave this on member down so that if the member is picked up as being down, then it can just route traffic over the alternate interface. But since it's load balance, it's going to be routing over both interfaces at the same time. So let me save this. Now we have a load balancer or a gateway group, but before anything of this will actually work properly, we'll just need to head into our gateways and we need to set some monitor IPs. Now the monitor IPs allows the gateway to basically be pinging or checking if a remote site is up, maybe something like a DNS server's address. And if it picks up that it can no longer get to that DNS server, then it will just understand that the interface is down and then it's gonna mark itself as down. So let's just edit the gateway and let's set a monitor IP. So for my primary WAN connection, I might just set the monitor IP as 1.1.1.1, which is the Cloudflare DNS. And if I click on the display advanced, you can see some additional settings that you can set and tweak, which relates to the, if you set the trigger event to something like latency or packet loss, you can tweak the settings here, but the defaults are fine. You shouldn't have to tweak it here. So I will just click save so that this WAN the primary WAN is monitoring my Cloudflare DNS. And the secondary WAN, I'm going to set that to actually monitor Google's DNS. So 8.8.8.8. .8 I'll save these settings. So now each WAN interface or gateway will in essence be pinging a certain IP to just check if it's up. So I'll apply these changes and ta-da, <laughs> we've added load balancers but it's not actually running yet. Nothing's actually happening because we need to apply um, this gateway group to any rules that we have specified. But before we do that, I just want to head back in the dashboard and we're going to make some alterations just to properly see what's happening and if failover is occurring, because I, I kind of like to just do this just to get a good overview of what's happening on the firewall. So let's tweak the dashboard a little bit. I might get rid of this uh, Netgear services support thing or NetGate services support uh, system info we can keep. And I will just leave it as that. That's perfect. So other thing I might do is I'll just go into the general setup and I might increase the dashboard columns to something like three, just so that I can play with my widgets a little bit more properly. So it's not just two big lines that I go through and if you look now, we have a little bit more space and we can add some extra widgets. So I'm just going to move my system information. We can leave our interfaces. Actually, the interfaces I'll move to the left. And now with this, we're going to add some extra widgets. We're going to add the gateway widget. So I'll just find the gateways. And I'll just drag this here. And you can also tune these widgets, what is being monitored by clicking on this um, range or spanner or whatever. And then you can tweak which gateways you're monitoring or what you want to monitor. So here I'm monitoring gateway IP and monitor IP. So that's fine. Uh, let's just leave the page. And one more widget I recommend getting is your traffic. So let's find traffic graphs. And now this I've also actually edited already so that it will only display my two WANs. By default, it will have all your interfaces, but I've just selected this for both of my WANs so that I can see what the WANs are doing. So let's save this. And now we've got a very good overview of what's happening on the firewall. So we can see which interfaces are currently up, if the gateways are up and what the traffic graphs look like. So how are we pushing traffic over our interfaces? So as a baseline test, let's just quickly go to something like um, fast.com and it should run. Let me go back to this screen. And here in the traffic graph, we can see that my primary WAN is now carrying all of the traffic. It's doing 25 megabytes of traffic. And I do have a 200 megabit link. So this seems correct to me. So this is 100% fine. But our second WAN isn't doing anything. All of the traffic is just kind of staying where it is. 
Now to get the traffic to load balance properly, we will actually adjust our firewall rules. So I'll go into my rules. I'll find my LAN since this is going to be traffic that's going to be leaving from the LAN, going to the internet. And I'm just going to tweak this a little bit. So I'll edit my policy and I'll scroll down. I'll click on the display advanced so I can see additional settings. And I'm just going to specify the gateway. So gateway, here it's set as default. And the default is just going to be my WAN connection. So it's this first hop. But there is this gateway group that we created, load balancer. So I'm actually going to select that. And now that I've selected that and I save this policy, and I might just do the same for the ICMP as well. So let's just find that uh, gateway, save it. So now the two policies that I have from my LAN to get out to any network or the internet, it will run through this gateway uh, or gateway group. And this in essence, if I hover over it, you can see what the WAN addresses are or the gateway addresses. So I'm going to apply these changes. And now that the, cha the changes have been applied, if I actually go back to the dashboard and I initiate the same test, it should actually load balance now. So let's just see. I see the traffic is running. And if I look at the screen there, we can see both links are effectively now carrying the traffic. So it should in theory be going half and half or whatever the capacities are, but I'm able to distribute traffic evenly between my two WAN links so that, you know, I, I get the best out of my solution so that I'm not wasting my one backup link that I'm paying for. And it is an active link. I'm just not using it actively. So this is what this is very useful for. So now we have load balancing in place. Let's just also test the upload. So I'm clicking on more info and it should do a little bit of an upload. And if we scroll back, we should see the upload traffic is also being load balanced. So this is fantastic. I'm, I'm really happy with this. And this is a pretty good stock standard setup just for load balancing. But let's say that secondary link was a capped solution and we didn't want it to just load balance because we might be wasting bandwidth or we'd be paying out of our ears if it's a capped solution and they're charging us some contract fees for capacity. So let's just set this up in the event of failover. And the process is really the same. We'll go into our system, our routing. We'll also leave the monitor IPs as is because it needs to use that monitor IP just to poll to see if the interface is up or down. And we'll just create a new gateway group. So the gateway group I'm going to create, I'll call this failover. And now we can specify our gateway priorities. So I'm going to use the WAN gateway again, and I'll set that for tier one. And the WAN two, which is our LTE in this case, I'm going to set select tier two, so that this is actually a second preferred connection. And this will also only happen in the event of member down. So let's save this. But again, the trigger level can be up to your choice. If you want to set it for packet loss slash latency, you're welcome to do that as well. So now we have a failover group. I don't need to tweak anything with the gateways because we've already got the monitor IPs. So all I really need to tweak now is my firewall policy. So let's go back into the rules. I'll go into the LAN and I'm just going to tweak those gateways from using the load balancer to be failover. I'll save this. And now that this has been saved, I can apply my changes. And now in theory, traffic should fail over in the event of one link dropping. So let me just go back to the PF sense and let's run a speed test. So all traffic should now just be going out over the primary WAN again. And there I can see it is all just going out over the WAN, the one WAN link because the bottom one is doing like bytes of traffic and the top one is doing 25 megabytes. So that clearly shows us that the one link is being preferred to push out the traffic or get to the internet. But let's actually emulate a internet fault. So what I might do is I've got this microtech on that WAN one. And this is actually that's giving us internet access. So I'm just going to shut this down. Once this microtech has been shut down, technically my WAN should be down. So let me just navigate back to my PF sense. And we should actually see that that WAN gateway goes down. So let's see, it's warning packet loss. So it's already picked up something isn't good. Something wrong has occurred here. So let's just see how long it takes to actually pick up that there's a big issue. There we see it says it's offline, there's packet loss. Now in that event, it should now be routing the traffic over the secondary link, the WAN2. So let's run the same test again. Let's just uh, refresh.
let me just open up a new tab for it fast.com there we go 200 megabits per second and i can see now that the traffic is routing out over the failover link without my intervention because of the load balancing or the gateways that we set up the gateway groups i should say so load balancing also offers you failover so if one of the links die in the load balancing group it doesn't matter because it will still just route traffic over the second link but again it is being utilized it's, it's two active links whereas this type of setup that i just did now this would be an active passive type of failover solution where again it might be for your ltes that's capped perhaps all right so i think this covers how we can do load balancing and failover on pfsense it's actually relatively easy and pain-free uh, i hope you've enjoyed i'd like to thank my youtube and patreon members for helping the channel out and obviously you guys the viewers thank you for watching i really appreciate it and i'll catch you in the next video Bye.